Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Lawrence Philip, aka DJ Random, and today we're gonna try to recreate some 80s sounding RPG edit baseline. So I got the idea of this tutorial after I watched Stranger Things on Netflix. So the scoring for the show is really, really good. It uses a lot of uh, synth wave sound. That's a sound that you get from some classic analog synth. So I thought maybe I should try to recreate that sound using a modern digital synthesizer like Serum to see if it's possible to recreate that sound. So I was messing around and this is the sound that I get. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but I think I come pretty close to it. So let's check out the sound. Let's just try to recreate this, okay? So let's just start, get started by initializing this preset. And we're gonna start doing this with just a saw wave. As always, I always like to detune this to maybe seven. And let's adjust the detune to here. And then let's start the next one. And I'm gonna go with a square. So we're going with the basic shapes and then I'm going to go with the square. So let's bring this down to minus two on the octave and then let's bring this up to seven and let's narrow it down to and let's see what we have. And then now the next thing is let's mess around with this envelope. We want to make something that sounds a little bit like... Let's go with something along that line. And then the next thing we're gonna try to put some filter envelope to change the shape of the sound. So let's turn on this filter. And then we'll go with the MG low 12 right here. And then we're gonna go with the envelope too. And we're gonna try to create this. Something along that line. And this is probably and let's try to make it straight like this and let's assign this here and maybe we'll go with something around here so that already sounds pretty good and then what we'll do is we'll add a noise in here but we're gonna go with the uh, analog white noise which is this one, analog ARP, ERP white. That should be your standard white noise. And then what we're going to do is let's go all the way down and then we want to assign this right here. And then let's assign this right here too. Let's see what we have. Notice when we go with the macro all the way open like that, we feel like there is like some note that's clashing. 
I think that was the release because the release is too long. So some of the sustained note from this kind of clashing with the new notes that's coming in. So what we should do is as we open this, this release should get shorter. So let's go here and let's bring this down to maybe around here. Yes, that sounds a lot nicer. Let's go to here and let's beef up some of this sound. Let's bring the resonance a little bit and then let's give it a, a little bit of a drive. a little bit too much. Let's go right there. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about this one thing. One of the main character with some of those classic analog synth is because they were analog. The pitch usually have the tendency to just kind of fluctuate. You don't have this like one smooth pitch. So they kind of like fluctuate a little bit, you know, within one semitones. So we can try to achieve that by modulating the pitch, the fine pitch using an LFO. So let's go with the LFO one and check this BPM because we don't want it to be synced to the BPM. We want it kind of like randomly moving so let's go with a pretty slow one so it should be something around 0 0.1 hertz that should be pretty slow now what we do is we assign this to this fine but if we go full like this this goes like almost like a hundred cent which is like one semitone so we're just gonna go reduce this to maybe below Maybe around there, and we'll do the same with this one. So we shouldn't be hearing it because it should be like really, really minor shifting, but it should give it like a little bit of a feel that it is an analog because you know, back in the days, it's not zero and ones. Zero and one is very consistent. Instead, it used to be like a circuit board. So each of the circuit board have a little bit of a fluctuation. That's why like when you're talking about uh, analog synth, yeah, people always say how like they have a nicer detuned sound. That's because they're from a circuit board. So yeah, so let's see how that sounds. <laughs> still a little bit too loud and then to make things a little bit more interesting let's go with this detune right here let's bring it let's narrow this down a little bit and then we'll bring it to somewhere right here and we'll do the same with the second oscillator. So it starts with a pretty narrow detune and then made an adjustment on this uh, the level for the white noise so if we open it we hear it more a 
And then what's the next thing that we can do? Oh, well, we can go to the FX because right now it's pretty dry. So let's EQ this a little bit because this is just kind of like a lead base. Usually we're going to layer like a lower, like a sub underneath it. So let's cut off, do a little bit of a low cut. I think about 150, I think should be okay. And then we can add a reverb so it's not so dry but let's move this underneath the EQ and then let's make the DK smaller and the room smaller try to add some hyper dimension here let's make the size smaller yeah I think that sounds pretty good so let's see how that goes if we put an automation in here Okay, I think that sounds pretty good. So there you go, guys. That's just kind of like an idea of what we can do with the modern digital synth on trying to achieve like an analog sounding synthesizer. So just the main point about having uh, trying to recreate an analog synth using a digital synth is just remember that the pitch will not be consistent when it's analog because it's going through some circuit boards so there is always going to be a fluctuation on the pitch that's the most obvious thing that differentiate between digital synth and uh, analog synth and another thing is maybe white noise white noise is very very prevalent in that era so you use that a lot you know to to up the energy level and detuning there is a lot of detuning that you have to do in there that's about it guys recreating analog synth on a digital synthesizer so if you guys like this please give me a thumbs up and if you find this to be really helpful then please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one